Okay, wagon wheel. Uh, so recently I posted a tutorial for wagon wheel in claw hammer style. And after doing so, received multiple requests to do the same thing for finger style. So here we are. We're gonna learn wagon wheel. I'm actually gonna show you three different ways to play a break uh, on the banjo for wagon wheel. Um, it's a song that virtually everybody is familiar with, arguably the most popular song to feature a banjo in the last couple of decades. So if you're holding a banjo in your hand somewhere in public, there's a good chance someone will ask you to play it and expect you know how to play it. And the great thing is that it's not too challenging of a song to learn. Um, it's great for in the earlier uh, stages of learning, not too melodically, or harmonically complicated. It's played and sounds much, much better at a slower tempo. Um, and 99% uh, of your audience will prefer it to songs that are uh, five times harder to play on the banjo. So it's kind of a no-brainer to learn uh, in the beginning. Also, I recently posted a jam track for this song that I would highly recommend practicing along with once you have learned it again. This is great uh, early learning material for really developing solid rhythm and timing. Uh, songs like this, uh, a lot of you know more popular popular music we all know well, not to play too fast, unlike the kind of common bluegrass repertoire, is really ideally suited for the earlier, you know, beginning and intermediate stages of learning to play finger style banjo. Okay, so we're in the key of A. Uh, I'm honoring the original key that this was recorded in by Old Crow Medicine Show. That is the key that you'll find in the jam track. Um, all you have to do to get there is just go is just raise standard G tuning up two frets. So hopefully that's familiar to you. If not, the actual notes are A E A C sharp E, and you can get there either by tuning your strings directly to those notes. Right, most modern banjos can accompany that higher pitch tuning or you can capo at the second fret and either tune or capo your fifth string uh, up to A. So regardless of how you get there, your string should be fifth string is an A, fourth string is an E, third string an A, second string a C sharp, first string an E, okay? All right, so let's begin by learning the chord progression. The chord pro progression and your melody are kind of your foundation upon which you're gonna build everything else. Um, so chords for this tune, um, I'm gonna use the Nashville numbering system. Um, one, because I think it's always best to kind of get in the habit of thinking in terms of that system rather than specific no names of notes and chords, but also because if we're capoed up here, you may be thinking of this open chord here as a G, even though it's an A, since that's what you're um, used to, if you're used to playing mostly in, in uh, G tuning. This, your C shape is now a D and so forth. So we'll stick to the Nashville numbers uh, when describing uh, these chords. And by the way, the um, progression is the same for the verse and the chorus. I'll, I'll play it first and then review it. Heading down south to the land of the pines Found my way into North Carolina Staring down the road and pray to God I see headlights Okay. Rock me mama like a wagon wheel Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, mama, rock me. Okay, notice the same chords for each of those, all right? So we began on the one chord, open strings. Move to the five chord. Move to the six chord, which you might know as your E minor shape. Then to the four chord. Then back to open. Back to the five and the four. All right, with me? Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, mama, rock me. Okay, there they are. Uh, let's just quickly kind of orient ourselves to the melody. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, mama, rock me. All right, 
So that's kind of our home base, those chords, those melody notes. Now we'll just surround it with some uh, banjo decorations. Uh, and we'll start, I'll start by giving you an arrangement that you could play either two finger or three finger style. Okay, it sounds like this. Okay, so first measure is this. So I'm just starting with that slide on the third string, second to fourth fret. I'm basically surrounding all those melody notes with my thumb with drones on the first and fifth string. All right, second measure, we switch to the five chord, which I make as the partial chord, which you might call your partial D shape, even though it's an E, and I'm leaving the fourth and fifth string, I mean the fourth and first strings open. All right, so I get this. And so I'm bringing my ring finger to get that fourth fret, fourth fret of the third string when I need it. All right, next measure, we're moving to our sixth chord. I don't do, do anything with my fretting fingers except hold down the chord. Um, then I'm gonna change my uh, fretting fingers to that four chord, even though, which is just bringing my finger to that first uh, fret of the second string, even though I'm not actually gonna strike it, if I don't, if I don't do that, uh, it's still going to resonate and sound a little off. So this is what this uh, fourth measure sounds like. All right, now we're back to the one chord, open strings. All right, now this next measure is moving again to the five chord. We're only playing melody notes on this fourth string. It sounds like this. Right now, moving into the four chord, I'm gonna start by hammering on to that fourth string second fret. Okay, so I'm doing that little syncopated pattern there as a vamp after that last melody note, and that extends to the next measure as well. So I'll play those two measures together. And that concludes the whole uh, break. So again, from start to finish. All right, now we'll move on to our three finger version down the neck. Our last version is gonna be up the neck. It sounds like this. Okay, so we're taking advantage of uh, the third finger there to add in some syncopations into this particular version. All right, so first measure starts out like this. Okay, a little slower. Again, we're beginning with that slide, second fret, second uh, fret to fourth fret on the third string. For, that's the first measure. Second measure, again, go into this uh, five chord. One more time. All right, again, it's just as before, bringing my ring finger to the fourth fret when I need it. All right, moving to the sixth chord. Now we're going forward roll throughout the whole thing. All right. And then bringing my uh, index finger to that first fret of second string, now make the four chord. All right, and this is continuing the pattern from the previous measure, which is why in isolation it sounds a little bit um, unusual. But if we play those two measures together, it makes more sense. Incidentally, that is pretty much the signature feature of Scruggs style banjo that dif differentiates it from other kinds of three fingers. It's that extension of, of picking patterns across measures that where they don't resolve within a single measure. And if you try to squeeze in the melody notes in, in there, then you get these syncopated sounds. Again, to these two measures here. 
right, get that nice little syncopation. Next measure, back to open strings. Real simple. Next measure, just like before. And then these last two measures sound like this. All right, that nice little vamp pattern. We did something kind of similar to that with two fingers, but this is how we'll do it with three fingers. Again, a nice little syncopated loping sound that it gives. All right, once again, all together. Okay, that's our version number two. The last version will play up the neck, all right? It's gonna sound like this. Okay, um, so Breakthrough Banjo course members uh, will recognize here we're playing out of third uh, position in the tray cluster, using the tray cluster, okay? Um, so it's a good opportunity, good, great song for practicing your, uh, your um, clusters in the, in the bright fretboard system. Okay, so first measure, again, we're on our uh, one chord up the neck, seventh fret of third string, eighth fret of second string, ninth fret of first string, sounds like this. And we're just going to be doing forward rolls at the wazoo in this break, so. All right, that's our first one. We're going to move to our, uh, what is our five chord again, down the neck, barring across um, the uh, seventh fret here. Uh, you don't have to bar all the strings if you don't want to. And it sounds like this. Okay. So again, together with that first measure, you can kind of hear it a little bit better. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. All right, back to our sixth chord here. So now we've got uh, ninth fret of first string, eighth fret, second string, uh, ninth fret, third string. And we have. Okay. Again, continuing that roll pattern into the next measure where we're going to our four chord again. And all we have to do is keep our fingers where they're at except for on the first string and bring our pinky onto the 10th fret and play this. All right, so combine that with the preceding measure. All right, back to the one chord position for this. And now we broke that forward roll pattern. We've got our melody note on the second string there. All right, now back to the um, five chord again, barring against around on the second, seventh fret. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring in my middle finger when I need it on that second fret. And now we're gonna end by hammering on second fret of first string, and then continuing that same little vamp pattern we did before. All right, all together slowly. So that is the break, and that follows the melody for the chorus. The melody for the um, uh, verse is very similar, so if you wanted to play one for that, it might sound like this. So only a little bit of difference there. Now, Leave it to you as an exercise if you want to try to figure that one out uh, on your own.
Don't forget to utilize the uh, Brain Joe backing track for this song to practice all this stuff. It'll really help you to solidify and get good, uh, good rhythm and timing, uh, which is so, so important to um, good banjo playing. And if you uh, want the tabs for all three of these versions, uh, just click the link in the video description. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.